Hello everyone, and welcome to Lesson 9 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be introducing the concept of NS Arrays, or the NS Array class in Objective-C. So, um, as you can see here, we've already started quite a few tutorials, and uh, we've learned many of the basics. We've learned how to create a basic class, the at interface portion of the class, which just shows basically a public view of what the class looks like and the instance variables that it has. And then we have the at implementation portion, which is how the class is executed. And that's mainly what we've focused on. And then with a few tutorials now, we've been branching out. With NS strings, we've uh, seen a different class that Objective-C has, which is the NS string class. And we've shown a few features of it. And this is basically what we're doing for now. Um, we're just branching out on different classes that Objective-C has to offer us. So NS array is simply another class that Objective-C has to offer. And an NS array, uh, like a normal array, holds a group of objects. Um, so when let's just run through um, how to create a normal array in C, for example. So if you don't already know how an array works in any language, I highly suggest you check out uh, the C programming tutorial um, that I have for arrays. It's uh, It definitely explains how arrays work in a lot of detail, and you'll understand arrays fully. If you are coming from another language and you understand arrays, that's great. Uh, you probably already know what I'm talking about. So, um, but I'm just going to run through the basics, but I'll leave a link for um, the C programming tutorial as well. So, if I was to create a um, an array of 10 numbers, and I'll make them integers. So, it's, I do something like this, int numbers, and I declare it with 10. 10 meaning that there's 10 elements or 10 numbers in this array. So, this integer array of 10 numbers uh, that's what we just declared. And then, of course, we'd go on to initialize it, and we'd do something like this. We'd say int i gets 0, and as long as i is less than 10, since we have 10 elements in our array, then we would do something like that, and then our um, i would just increment by 1, since we want to go to each element and inc or, uh, initialize it. So then we do something like this, numbers i gets and we do some value. So um, basically what would happen here is that we start at i equal to 0. So since arrays always start at 0 and go to 1 less than the, um, t the number of elements, so arrays always work from 0 to n minus 1, so in this case 0 to 9. So our i starts at 0, and as long as i is less than 10, so i, the maximum value that i could be is 9. So this is what we want. We want i to go to 0 and all the way up to 9, since arrays always start at 0. So this is the 0th element in our array, and so the 0th element will get a value of 6, and every element all the way up to 9 will be initialized with 6. This is pretty much how arrays work. It's just a collection of a type, and in this case we have a group of 10 integers. So again, if you uh, don't know what I just explained, I, I suggest you can uh, check out the C programming tutorials and you'll understand arrays. But um, that's it, it's just an important thing to know. So um, let's talk about NS arrays though for now. So what makes an NS array different from a normal array? So a normal array will hold, uh, it will hold actually anything technically. It can hold um, objects, it can hold um, in, in, in a, it can hold primitive types, which is important. Um, arrays can hold integers, doubles, characters, and uh, they can also uh, create um, even objects in the arrays as well, which is a different story. But um, that uh, usually when we work with objects, though, we sometimes work with NS arrays, which give us some different flexibilities. So NS arrays only work with objects, which is key. NS arrays don't work with integers, doubles, and characters. They don't work with primitive types. They only work with objects. So we can add, uh, what, what are some objects we know? We know that there's a string object, which is NS string, 
and we know we've worked with our rectangle class for quite a while, which we can create an object of that. So that's another object. Basically, any class that we can create an object out of, that's um, what we can put in an NS array. So how do we create an array, or how do we create an NS array? It's the exact same way we create any other class object. And you'll see this time and time again, how we create objects in Objective-C, and it, it'll become second nature to you um, before long. So uh, like this NS auto release pool, like our rectangle class, like NS string, they all start the same way. So we, we give the type that we want or the class name, which is NS array. Then we make a pointer or a star operator, whatever you want to call it. And then we give it the name that applies to the object we want to create. So we'll call this array. Actually, I'll call it names because I'm going to fill this with a bunch of NS strings with names. So now uh, we create this the same way we do with all the other things. Uh, we're going to use the alloc init method for, of doing this for now, which will just keep the memory around until we get rid of it. And we'll talk about memory stuff later, but you can forget about that for now. Just know that for now we're going to be using the alloc init way of creating arrays, or you can use the other way, which is convenience methods. We'll talk about both a bit. But uh, you don't have to worry about memory stuff right now. We'll we'll get into that much later. So um, aside, so we know that we have to allocate enough space for this NS array, and we have to initialize all the variables. So NS array and alloc, simple enough. Pretty much how it works for every other one. And then we do init, and if we hit the escape key, we can see all these different methods that we can use. And we want the init with objects method, which basically allows us to initialize our array with whatever objects we want. So we want to initialize this array of names with a bunch of string objects. So to create an NS string in Objective C, we use the at sign with two double quotes, as you've seen before. And I'll just throw a bunch of names in here. So Lucas and John, maybe I should make his name capital. And we'll put Steve in there. And so that's pretty much our array right there. So are we done just there? Um, no, actually. And this is where um, actually a lot of confusion a little bit come from comes from the NS arrays. Um, in other languages, you could do something like that, and it would completely understand. But in Objective-C, NS arrays, um, they only know they're done with the array when you have a nil object. And nil in Objective-C, which is spelled like this, N-I-L, just stands for a zero object, basically. So uh, it's not actually a class, it's just basically, uh, when you say nil, you just mean basically there's no object. So that's basically what nil means. It's just a zero object. It's just like if we were to put a zero at the end of a string, or a character array, um, that you know, in C, it knows that once it finds a zero, it's done. This is the same kind of idea. Nil just means that our array is finished. Okay, so now we've created an our array. What can we do with it? So um, we've already initialized all the values. We don't have to do a for loop for it. Um, we have a bunch of different string objects in our array. So now we want to print these objects out, for instance. So let's go to a for loop, and so we can run through the entire array. So we can do int i, and we'll give it a value of 0. And now uh, we can do something special with our NS array, which is um, NS array has a method called count. And uh, it's very simple. All I have to do is give the name of the array that I want to use, and then I say count. And that just calls the count method. It will return the number of elements in the array, and that way I don't have to, so if I change my array later on, my for uh, loop gets updated along with that. So it's kind of nice in that regard. It knows how many objects we have in our array. So now I can just do I++ and all is good. And now we're done with that portion. So now we can use an NS log, and if we want to print this out, uh, we can do so, and we're just going to use percent at because we're using an object, so if we want to print out what an object is in Objective-C, we use the percent at format specifier. So now uh, we do something like this, and we call the object at index method. 
So we can do names and object at index, which is basically saying what's the object uh, that we have at blank number. So uh, don't get confused by this NSU integer. All this really means is integer. So um, it's actually it actually is just a normal integer. So don't get freaked out by it. It's all, all this is asking you for is a number that we can identify our array by. So for example, in our zeroth element we have Lucas. In our first element we'd have John, and in our second we'd have Steve. So that's how our NS array would work. So here we have i equal to zero. So if we print it out, or if we were looking at the object at index i, then if i is equal to zero, it's going to know that Lucas is the zeroth or the zeroth element in our array or our NS array. So uh, that zeroth element would be the object at index zero. So that would return that object, and I have to finish this off with uh, another uh, brace, otherwise that would not run. Um, so when I call this method, my in my names or my NS array class, there's a method called object at index, and it will return the object that is at that index. Um, I guess hence the name object at index. But then I just have one parameter, which is an integer, and I just call i for this case because I want to go through each element in this array. So um, by doing that, I have uh, the 0, 1, and 2. And since count only counts the numbers of elements I have, so I have three elements, so as, lo as long as i is less than that count, so i can only be 2 at maximum. So I'll go through 0, 1, 2, that's three total elements, and that works along with this array. So um, let's just run through this for loop. Uh, i equal to 0, that means that we're at the 0th object. It'll return the object at that index, which is Lucas, and so it'll print out Lucas. And then it will do, it will increment the i and go to 1, and then it'll go to John, return that object at index i, which is the first element, or technically the second one, if you, you guys know what I mean. So the first element, or the first index, um, object at that index, 1. So that will return John after that, and then we'll get to the second index, or second element, and Steve will be that element. It will return that and print that. So let's go ahead, build and run this, enough talking, and let's actually see this in action. So as you can see, we have Lucas, John, and Steve. And that's how NS arrays uh, basically work. There's a um, bunch of different things we can do with NS arrays, um, but you can get into much more interesting stuff with an NS mutable array, which we'll learn about later. But NS arrays just get you used to using the syntax that we use in Objective-C for creating objects. And you can kind of get a feel for how um, this kind of works. So anyway, this was the NS array tutorial. If you enjoy these tutorials, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I do not charge anyone to subscribe, obviously. It's YouTube. I don't think you can do that. So anyway, um, there's no reason not to subscribe. So um, more tutorials, always making new ones for the Objective-C, and I add other tutorials as well for Xcode and different things. So, you know, just check out the channel as well and subscribe, and I'll see you next tutorial.